Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> you should have pressed record like five minutes ago. You would have seen the dark side. Of you. Yeah. I'm tired. Even though we got an hour, I'm still tired. Okay. How are you today? I'm good. It's like, I go ahead. I'm Jackie. I'm Caitlin. And this is Caddy Jack's Knits. Welcome. Welcome, <laughs> Welcome back. You know, we have some new viewers too. Hello, we new do. viewers. Let's I know. Pretend, let's pretend it's their very first podcast. Like, okay. I bet there is somebody today who will just randomly press record and they'll go, there are two women wearing matching sweaters. What gives? Right. Well, so, we're. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. No, you. <laughs> um, we're very patient with one another. We're what? Very patient with one another. Yes, yes. I'm in Madison, Wisconsin. And I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. And, we, and that is not how it started. No, Caitlin used to sit right here and we would podcast together. And then we, she moved away and we started a thing called Patreon. And we are so grateful to our Patreon folks because they allow us to fly to each other and podcast together. Caitlin has a new job, which we're so excited about. Yay, Caitlin. Yeah. But her schedule's been, you know, a little, you can't just get a new job and say, oh, I'm going to Rhinebeck and oh, I'm going to Black Mountain and oh, I'm going to go podcast with Jackie. Well, I sort of did that already. <laughs> <laughs> they hired me and I was like, so the month of October. Well, Let's right. Talk. That's why we're not do I mean, that's why we're not together right now, though. Yes. Because yes. Um, so the next one we will be together. We were yes. looking at flights just yesterday. Yes. So. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our Patreon folks. Yes. Uh, it's a way to support the podcast. And we're just so grateful. Speaking of which, last time we got together, we hit 9,000 on YouTube. And so we were able to, yay, yes. we were able to give $100 to the Nick Collage Scholarship Fund, which the fund, which they matched. So that's fantastic. And we will be having a giveaway. We'll talk about it, two giveaways today, one on Instagram and one here. Oh, that's, <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Uh oh, it's gonna be one of those because be... she's frozen again. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'm waiting for her to unfreeze, but I probably shouldn't do that. Keep going. Um, so there she is. Hi. So let's start with the half wrap, Cal. Why not? Sure. So we just wrapped out the literally no pun intended, wrapped up the most amazing knit along. It was a year long knit along. Um, we teamed up with Pearl Soho, um, who has this free pattern called the half and half triangle wrap. And we started the knit along a year ago with the idea that we would knit all year. And for those that were able to, we would meet up in Rhinebeck um, and have the most amazing rainbow of of knitters and so we did that which was just kind of hard to believe that that has come and gone already but we do want to share all the details of what that was like yeah and i i feel like we've heard from everybody except one person um you know to notify them that they won and it's, you know it's funny it's a lot to manage i'm going to show a picture in case that one person is watching so Let's see, this one right here, it's sort of pink and black. It's a very stylized photo. So we, I don't, I don't know that we've heard from them, but everybody else has gotten their gift cards and, and even uh, Cozy made things. She even posted what she bought already. I know. So we do want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to Pearl Soho. They had an unbelievably generous giveaway. And I think what was the spirit of it was just so um, lovely in that the winners did not have to knit out of linen quill. And that that's just shows um, 
It, it just it made us so happy to see that. And we felt like it was a very approachable knit along. And, um, and I think we all know it's not over people. We're all still going to be knitting these and everybody has, there have been so many posts about interesting different ways to, to keep going and change the pattern up, whether it's stripes or color blocks or marled or, you know, so um, we will definitely keep the hashtag, the half wrap cow uh, going. So please keep posting. Um, we'd love to see it. Um, and I have, I finally got my second color in the mail, which I was so excited about, which I do want to say thank you to all the viewers that messaged me about wanting willing, their willingness to share their stash of rose granite with me. Um, that was so sweet. I had so many people contact me, but they did get it back in stock. Oh, and I did, um, so, oh, okay. and I'm here on Zoom. This doesn't show up, but I'm very excited about finally having my second color. Do you have the color cards with you? Because we I do. Have, okay. Yes. We'll yeah. talk about that in a second. I also just wanted to say, you know, just this week, um, we got a message from a viewer who is knitting one who, um, I'm just going to say it, Donna, who had lost her son. And mm -hmm. she's knitting this during her time of grief. And, and I know throughout the Cal, a lot of people have had really hard things. And that's the thing that I... I definitely don't want to go away about it is the fact that people can feel connected in this really soothing, simple, beautiful project. And there's so much that we can't change, but we can be belong to each other. And I think what started off, I, I remember it started off as just a form of self expression, but it really morphed into something so much bigger than that. Um, I, I'm going to read the poem I wrote too, in case somebody didn't. I have insomnia all the time. I had it last night. I had it the night before the half wrap cow. And so sometimes I write poems in the middle of the night. And so I'll read you this in case you missed it. But I think it kind of talks about that quality that we didn't expect. So it says this half wrap. Um, this half wrap us in color when so much falls away and all we could do was hold two needles and watch time make its fabric in our hands. Each wrap a witness, come strength, come weakness, come doubt and radiance because you're coming anyway. But let us choose our colors to wrap and reveal our hearts, the known and the unknown and how a shawl made alone was made together when we most needed fierce beauty, soft patience and welcome. How a half wrap somehow held me and held us together. And I just want you to know we're thinking about you today, Donna, and so many of the people we met that are going through some very hard times right now. Yeah, yeah. No, it was pretty amazing to, have people come up to us over and over and over again um, to talk about how this really carried them through. And that was just, that's what it's all about, right? So mm -hmm. that was that was just amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so um, I have, yeah, I have one on my needles too that I knit during Rhinebeck. I haven't even opened it since Rhinebeck. I just want to see how far I am. Okay, see, oh, oh my gosh, I'm in the middle of a row. Perfect. <laughs> the thing we're not supposed to do as podcasters. Right. I'm doing this one with orange. I don't know where it is right now, but we saw, it was just so fun meeting everybody on the hill and, you know, encountering people, but we'll get to that. But yeah, that's wow. so like, you know, <laughs> I like have my list of all the things to talk about, you know, just because we we're basically starting with Rhinebeck weekend and working forward. But do you um, want to talk about the um, progress keeper? That yes, I do. So um, we we really wanted to do something fun and special for those people that um, were able to meet us at the meetup, um, and we teamed up with um, Fangirl Fibers, Emily from Fangirl Fibers, who um, has her own company and she makes. Um, laser cut 
uh, stitch markers and she dyes yarn and she's just all sorts of fabulous. And we, you know, I message her back and forth about like, we have this half wrap thing coming up and can you come up with a design? And oh my goodness, did she blow us out of the water. So this is a, a, a pin, but she did progress keepers for us. I don't know, is that, can you see that Jackie? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so she, her design was just amazing. So she got the Caddy Jacks logo and the Rhinebeck meetup. Anyway, she was just beyond fabulous to work with. And um, she still has progress keepers available. So we, in the show notes, we have a link to her, um, but you can get the progress keeper for a dollar and then it's just um, whatever, you know, the shipping. So if you want to be, feel like you want to be a part of it and have your own, um, please just reach out to her. She'd be happy to send them your way. So um, that was super fun. I feel like, oh my gosh, we finally had, you know, um, swag. <laughs> Penny Jack swag. We're, we're big girls now. Yeah, we're big girls. Yeah, big girls. Um, but anyway, that was super fun to hand those out. And um, we definitely wanted to make sure that those, that anybody who wasn't able to travel for that could still get a little piece of the Caddy Jacks half wrap cow um, fun. So check her out. And um, yeah, so that was super fun. And on the topic of linen quill, should we just go there? Yes, we should go there. Let's go there. Okay. What are you wearing, Caitlin? I'm wearing the daily pullover. Can you possibly back up at all? Maybe I'll try. Setup? I'll try with like, you know, this amazing setup. So I will try. It just, it looks so amazing on you. How's that? Very nice. Okay, hold on, hold on. Mannequin down. So um, I did, mine is not knit as cropped as yours, um, but it's definitely still on the, you know, it's a higher waistband. Um, this is in Shiso Green, which I'm sure on Zoom, it is not coming up at the right color. So you should check out our Instagram because we did post a photo recently. It is the most glorious, happy green color um, that I think Pearl Soho has. And I think it's what- like Genmo green, that it's like yeah. very much like the Genmo green. Yes, that I also have in my stash for <laughs> another sweater, but I do, um, this, I mean, you've talked about this design before because obviously you are Yep. Um, and yours is in Rosewood, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, it is, like you said, it is such a different fabric when it's in stockinette versus garter. I mean, it's just, I don't, you just can't even describe it, but I will say I am super sensitive to wool being against my naked skin. I am not wearing a t-shirt under this. It, it is so wearable and it's so drapey. I mean, it just has such a beautiful hand to it and it's light and airy and this will not be my only one for sure. I mean, yeah. I, I think a bigger boxy version maybe with a split hem would be super cute. Even, you know, whatever. It's the linen quill palette is so vast. Yeah. We started, I'll stand up and show my fit too. Um, you know, I just, I did slightly shorter sleeves and I don't know, it's slightly shorter, but this was some um, leftover from half and half. Like yeah. I had thought I was actually, I had a different combo. I remember I was going to do this as my half and half wrap. Mm -hmm. I think Stacy from St Stress Knits is doing that right now. Yeah. And then I decided to make it into a sweater. So, and this takes... On our sizes, I don't remember what size I did anymore. I think you did a four, right? I did a four. It's yeah. less than three skeins. So. Yeah, mine was about two and a half, maybe a little bit more than two and a half skeins. So that's pretty incredible for any sweater and, and a really reasonable sweater. And fingering weight sweaters are just such great Tennessee pieces or for us transitional pieces. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's called the daily pullover. And here's a couple thoughts we're having. We have where, oh, there's, I'm distracted because there's a, is it a downy woodpecker? The one with the little red head? Yeah. That's so cute. And they yeah. bounce around. Anyway, yeah. there's one bouncing around out my window. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so a couple things we, we keep alluding to, and here's the day we're launching 
um, a knit along, but it'll be, you have some time to get your yarn because Pearl Soho is going to donate to two people who comment below a sweater's quantity of linen quill and the pattern by Paula Pereira. So Yay. all you have to do to participate is tell us what color you're interested in in the comments below. So go check out their palette. And then later on, I'm thinking after the holidays, I'm, I'm going to lead a, a class doing this in case you feel like you need support. I will lead a class for it too, which I'm excited to do. And I want to knit one for, I don't know if I want to gift knit one, but I kind of want to make one for Sally because um. I think I, it's so beautiful and I would love to, and Sally's knitting like 10,000 things, but I would, I, this, again, this goes into the half wrap thing of the palette is so amazing. <laughs> so yeah. I want to see all the different colors. So one of the things I've done before when I've knit with for Sally is I've knit like the complicated parts and then she just does the stockinette, mm -hmm. you know, the, the round and around. Cause once you get here, it's, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause it's, some, it's got a beautiful raglan to it and yeah. Yeah. And this V-neck is so yeah. elegant. I love it yeah. so much. Yeah. I just love it. Um, and I, as I, I was blown away when I saw Caitlin in it. Cause I just, I do love a knit that looks good on different body types. Mm -hmm. And it's very sexy on Caitlin, and it's more like 40 on me. That's whatever. Whatever, it's fine. I'm just saying, I think it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, no, so, it's a really, it's such a wearable knit. And I do feel like I am, the more I get into sort of being, thinking about patterns, this is the kind of pattern I feel like I will just reach for over and over and over again versus, mm -hmm. you know, more. Yeah color like whatever more complicated knits so yeah so yeah. in general though so this particular garment is one of the things you can knit for our cal which i don't know i think we're calling it for the quill of it right because we i think all, so yeah for the quill of it because i also wanted to i have some worsted linen quill that i want to play with and so we will, and you know, when we went to Rhinebeck, for instance, Cheryl Lacosta Price, she had the most amazing linen quill shawl on. We're yeah. working on you, Cheryl. Cause we Cheryl, decided, we're coming for you. Yeah, we want Cheryl to come show you her shawl. And Gazelle, she just made the half and half wrap in um, the Gentle Knitters colors, kettle black and blue, which is incredible, mm -hmm. which I want to do too. But anyways, all your linen quill projects, we can put an FO thread because so much of so many of you have become obsessed with this yarn, and we are apps, we are very well aware that some of you have bought more half wrap quantities than you've knit up, and maybe you want to do something different with your linen yeah. quill. Yeah. So we'll put a um, a thread for the chat about linen quill on our Ravelry page. It's not there yet. But to kick it off, thank you again, Pearl Soho. Um, and Paula will come back too, and she will come back during maybe one of those classes that we have, and she can talk to some more about the daily pullover, this specific garment, which again, I know Caitlin just said it, but it's such a fantastic basic. Yeah, it is. It's just amazing. I mean, the, but the detail, the details on it are just what elevate it to not just a great basic. I mean, it's just, a, you know, elegant, just, right? Yes, totally. Um, yeah. So just to be clear, like the giveaway, we obviously want you to um, comment on what color you would knit with. Um, but the, the, the cal itself is really knitting anything, any pattern you want with linen quill. And I, I think that that because we've been sort of thinking about that, I keep coming across patterns, either ones I've knit or ones that I want in it, that I'm like, oh, wouldn't that be amazing for Linen Quill? And my latest was for viewers who have been with us for a while, they, you probably know that I've knit two uh, ready uh, sweaters and I'm always looking to potentially make another one. And I think a fingering weight or even the worsted weight Linen Quill would be an amazing ready, amazing. Oh yeah, and I still need to knit a, a ready. I you know. know, Jan from Forever Yarn Doylestown, 
who we love, who we love, who's so beautiful and amazing. Um, she was wearing a pattern that I'll talk about later. Sorry if I'm making a lot of noise. It's an, another one of these incredibly elegant patterns that would be mm -hmm. good at linen quilt too. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty endless, but uh, so we hope that you'll be inspired to um, maybe do something new with linen quilt and join mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. but I will, but I mean, I do want to show this. Um, we asked Pearl Soho to share with us the sample cards of all the linen quill. And it's so beautiful. I do sleep with this under my pillow. I mean, I, I'm sure again, it's not showing up on Zoom, but the color palettes are so fun. And it's just fun to work with where you like pick this one and then you put it next to that. And it's like, oh, look at that fun pattern. Yeah. Or color play. Um, and we left one with Debbie Corb too, because yeah. she was sort of, you know, she knit the first one. Yeah, she is. She is the queen of anyway. So this is super fun. You can purchase individual um, cards from them if you really sort of don't know what it, the colors truly look like. So that is a nice little feature. Um, but Absolutely. I know I, 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 I bring it out all the time. I did that mosaic sweater, but I would like to do just a straight up color work sweater too with mm -hmm. them. And it does. I guess I do feel like it's just such a winning palette. Yeah, for um, sure. So that's fantastic. Yeah. So, um, okay, great. So should we start with our Rhinebeck travels and just sort of go? Absolutely. Okay. So we flew out uh, to New York City on Wednesday um, before, you know, the Rhinebeck weekend and got to spend a lovely evening with Debbie and her sister Susie. And then uh, we carpooled up to, <laughs> to Rhinebeck together on Thursday. Oh, and by the way, yeah. Susie is Pittsburgh Mercantile Susie. I'm sure you yeah. guys know that, but we have Pittsburgh Mercantile bling on right now that we might as well tell you about. Yeah, right? very true. I feel like these earrings are, I see them all over the place now. And yeah. I, it makes me happy every time I see them. Well, this, so I'm just going to pull it up closer um, so you can see it. These are- Do you polish uh, yours? Yours are much brighter. Than the, well, okay, but these are the new design. So I, the other ones oh, I have have the birds on it. So th I did link these in our show notes. This is, um, I can't remember what they're called, but they're, the Sibelia is the artist. And so you and I have several pairs of Sibelia earrings. Thank you, Susie Korb. Um, and these are one of my latest editions. So I just love them. I need to sit around and polish and she has I know I I kind of like the patina personally I don't mind I my you know I put my earrings on when my hair is wet and I think that that's part of it you know or the humidity here but yes they're very highly polished but I do love the oxygen yeah. um she sells Natalie Latte, and I am wearing the most beautiful rose scarf right now I'm not going to take it off but it's just full of roses and then this is a new um item of hers which there are these little um wonder if you can see that can that's see a lion yep and i'm a leo so i she sent that to me which i love yeah um anyways back to driving to new york yeah so we carpooled to um Rhinebeck and we got dropped off at our airbnb and said goodbye to debbie and susie and then the next thing we did was wait for hours for our Uber. <laughs> and um, we had tickets for Woolen Folk, um, which is a new event um, during Rhinebeck weekend that uh, Felicia from String Things and I'm trying to think, do you remember who else she- Brooklyn General. Brooklyn General had uh, basically taken over Hutton Brickyards. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, which is this incredible venue. It's a hotel and it's right on the river and it's just the most beautiful. Um, I think I'm frozen. Oh, we can still hear we you. Can, okay, um, a beautiful venue and um, they had booths set up and they had music and they had um, food. Outdoors. It was all outdoors and it was, it was just such an incredible setting. It was very rustic and like, er like urban rustic because there's parts of the brickyard that are still in place lots of so it was a beautiful setting and um 
there were some absolutely amazing vendors there. Um, my whole pile to talk about is pretty much from <laughs> that one event on day one, right? I mean, it was like three hours in. And it's like, okay, you've spent your budget. <laughs> Walked right in and got to do your leg wrap. I did. I, <laughs> I did. I got to do my leg wrap with, um, <sighs> hello, why I'm blanking. Oh, um, I am. Carolyn, Carolyn from Blue. Carolyn. Carolyn yes. Blue. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Carolyn. Just like, it was one of those, like, yeah. So she and I met last the two years ago at Ryan Beck and, um, and definitely had, um, a, a little love fest going on. So we, we hugged by wrapping our legs around each other. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. our signature move anyway, but she, um, what had, um, some of her work on display at the most unbelievable booth. I have a little brochure for them. Do you have, do you want me to show that? To you? Yeah, I don't have it. And you're going to need to talk about, cause you got to chat with them, but we met Allison who was, hi Allison. Hi, Allison. Um, it's called the tattered, I think it's called blue, the tattered textile library. And this is one of their brochures, which, um, is we just hold it straight. Yep. Thank you. Uh, but I can read what the little blurb says about it because it was just amazing. Um, it's called Blue, the Tattered Textile Library opens its doors in 2017, serving as both an interactive ongoing art installation as well as an academic research library. Blue is an ever-growing home of 6,000 books, journals, exhibition catalogs, and objects that examine and celebrate the global history, traditions, makers, craft, and beauty of textiles. Um, you met the the owner of this business, correct? I mean, they are That's a nonprofit, and um, but I mean, just their whole aesthetic was absolutely incredible. I mean, obviously, everything had this blue tone to it, um, and we have some serious plans to go visit next time we come to New York, because um, they have these incredible classes. Yeah, uh, the class that I'm all intrigued by is the one where you if you buy a garment and it doesn't have pockets you can add pockets to it and nice. allison told me when we were talking that there's a whole feminist theory about pockets and women having power that they used to not be i didn't know this at all not be allowed to have pockets not be allowed to have possessions and pockets are a sign and we all just love pockets. I, t I, was, I got out my phone and read her my poem about pockets. Yeah. And nothing more disappointing than when you buy a dress or a skirt and it doesn't have pockets. So mm -hmm. I thought it was fascinating that they, um, I don't know, that there's a history to that. And they have a journal that has like exquisite topics. And she, I, th I think the woman you met is Jordana. Yeah. She's, yeah. I can't at the moment, I cannot remember um, the, but there are things like the topics will be something like grief or comfort. I don't, you know, and for instance, and they, they, they look for, gosh, the website is just so beautiful. They're looking for entries from people. So anything from like my mother, for instance, when my father died, she cut up all his shirts and made quilts out of them. I remember she even that winter that he died, she took all the little pieces and made ornaments out of them. Mm -hmm. It's like the, it's giving like weight and significance to what women do with their hands. And, yeah. and, and, and because a lot, I mean, you guys have heard this before, but because a lot of what we do, um, the care that we put into things is sort of I don't mean to say it's disposable, but it doesn't last and it's not valued as much. So this is a place where it's really saying these things value. And so she collects sort of humble artifacts instead of high art and and puts them on display as being pieces of our lives. So we can't wait to go. I know. Um, I'll just read the last line in her brochure. It says, we seek to preserve, give voice to, and contribute to such conversations about textiles and the ways in which they enrich our lives. Um, I, yeah. think, I think we can all relate to that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all the, the thoughts we um, 
weave in to every stitch we make of our knitting and our crocheting and I mean look at this this is um the first issue that they wrote about is called isolation and there's you know an essay on an isolated space for worship, memory, palace, sweatpants, and anxiety in the age of COVID, the architecture of isolation. And there's features about monasteries, a still life to an altar, solace in cloth, the mask becomes us. You know, incredible pieces. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I just, it's, it just seems exquisite and definitely, I was so glad she was there, but in, on the other hand, I'm in like this hyped ramp space when I go to a festival like that. So it's hard for me to really take it in. Yeah, no. And I, it was really the first booth we encountered and then it was like, okay, we should really go see some other things, but it was absolutely incredible. And so look forward to experiencing more and sharing, like being able to videotape and bring some of that experience to our viewers too. And, and I definitely want to buy one of those issues if it's in print or read the yeah. articles. It is funny. We will, the caveat to this whole Rhinebeck recap is that if you didn't go, we're here to report that it was wonderful and it also took all your energy that you had and you come back with none. And so we're just, Eve, we're just recovering. It's so yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's the and first it's big event. Yeah, and it's a lot to process. I mean, you can definitely do it on a smaller scale. I think we have sort of had the feeling of we want to do it all. We don't want to miss out. Um, but this was a really, I, I, this is one of my favorite parts of, I mean, I keep thinking about like when we were getting ready to podcast, like what were my favorite moments? But this, this venue was really lovely. It was, just, I felt like we, while we didn't have a ton of time there, I do feel like we had an ability to really connect with some people and boy, do we connect. So, um, well, yeah, that Bell didn't come. So we hung out with Cheryl and yep. we, pulled up those Adirondack chairs with Trish and we danced by the river. I mean, yeah. it's, what do you know what river? Is it the Hudson River? Or, I think, yes, I'm pretty sure it's the Hudson it's River. It's called but, Hudson Brickyard, so I would assume so. Yeah, but, I don't, yeah, who knows? We're not, we're here for the Fiverr people. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I'm but sure. it was, there was great music though. And yeah, yeah. You know, and just such, so we hope that they just keep on doing it. Cause it was, yeah. yeah. So that All right, was and then that was our first booth. Yes. And then I saw Sarah from Sea Change Fibers and she she had a mask on and I'm still ashamed to this moment. So of course I'm gonna bring it up. I couldn't recognize her. Like I was too manic, I couldn't recognize her. All right, well, you're, you've done your part now, it's okay. Yeah, but you if, you, if you haven't seen it, she dyed this whole yarn in Wes Anderson inspired colors. And by the way, Caitlin, if you haven't seen the latest Wes Anderson film, it's so yeah, good. I know, I want to, I haven't. So good. Okay, yeah. keep going. Oh, well, I mean, I would say my next encounter at this event was the pinnacle of my Rhinebeck experience because I, I Cheryl and I walked over to um, a new to me uh, vendor called The Lamb and Kid. And I think I spent at least an hour in that booth. Without you, you were off. And you in spent another hour. Oh, yes. Right. Like so hugging, kissing, petting, yes. ruling. Yeah. yeah. So Giving. we met. Yeah. We met a lot of friends there. So um, Sarah is um, the owner of Lamb and Kid. And she has um, her background is that she was part of Plucky. Um, and so she has an absolutely beautiful palette of colors and extraordinary fibers that she works with. I mean, you want to talk, I mean, it really is the find your fluff booth because oh, yeah. every, everything in this booth was soft. And That's cold. true. That yes. is so true. I have a plucky, um, from when we went to Michigan, I got, right. yeah. Yeah, I know. So, um, so anyway, I, they had a whole rack of samples that I just lost my mind over. And the first sample that I lost my mind over happened to be this very cozy, very fluffy, very light shawl. And wouldn't, could you even believe that it's actually called 
the, the big bluff. bluff. So I was losing my mind over this shawl. And then I got to meet the designer of the shawl and her name happens to be Caitlin. And it was kind of funny because I had, a, you know, we were all masked up and she came up to me and she's like, I think I recognize you. And I was like, and I pulled my hand off. Anyway, so she, she's aware of our podcast and um, Caitlin is absolutely adorable. And she had, her, she's a um, wanderlust knitter and we will have a link below. But anyway, absolutely fell in love with this pattern and then flipped out when I heard that it was called the big fluff. And I did buy yarn. Um, and I actually selected yarn without Jackie for the most part being around, which I want to get some serious credit for. Um, I had originally picked out a sort of bright pink color. And then I was pretty much, I will say accosted by Caitlin. <laughs> and Sarah and their lovely friend, Lindsay. And even um, Lindsay, uh, Sarah's husband, Bob chimed in and they all convinced me that this is the color that I should get, which I think is probably not coming up at all on Zoom, but That's it's called, so I took it out of, cause I wanted to show all the, it's called Trippy and it's like a Neon, lavender. I mean, wh what's it coming up for you? It's good. It still comes yeah. up as so good. Oh, so it's Surrey. And um, it's from her line called um, Diamond Lane. And uh, it I is... I love those vintage labels she has. Oh, I know. And, the, and okay, if it's not like already perfect for me, the, the uh, yarn base is called Birdie. Oh, cute. So anyway, so this is Trippy. Uh, the pattern calls for three skeins and it's knit on super large needles. And I'll show you what another size needles. Um, hold on. I'll have to look it up. So it's, uh, let me, I'll get that in a second. Um, but you can see in her photo of how she styles it. It's just, it just scrunches down super small. So you can just, um, you can wear it. Um, I show it. They're wearing them here. Yeah. Okay. So the dark haired Chiquita is Caitlin and the blondie in the middle is uh, Lindsay. And yep, we did have just about that much fun with them. We love um, them. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so it is knit on, let's see, size 13 needles. Nice. Yes, I know. So definitely oh, you found your fluff. But I found my, well, that, I found one of my fluff. I mean, that's just the beginning of it, but. You have um, a find your fluff cow going on too. If yes. Know. Yeah. So the find your fluff cow is basically a year long cow. We'll probably wrap it up next spring. You said at the end of your school year is essentially what we were thinking. And for us, that's really about finding something that's super cozy, that is just soft and just anything goes. Um, but this shawl to me speaks to me very strongly and um and anyway caitlin and sarah were unbelievably generous and are giving us um a kit and you have the yarn right mm -hmm. yes so, so this color is called plaid is and then it cuts off oh i think it's plaid is my favorite color Oh, I love, this is just this incredible bright orange. It's not yeah. showing up as an incredible bright orange on here. It's so yes. good. Yes. It's so, so thank, good. yeah. So thank you, Lamb and Kid, um, the Lamb and Kid for uh, giving us this yarn for the giveaway. And uh, Caitlin is going to include the pattern for the big fluff. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be an Instagram giveaway. To celebrate our, we've hit 9,000, over 9,000 on Instagram. So we're super excited about that. Thank um, you, everybody. Yes, thank you. And so we'll be posting that, um, we'll be posting it on Instagram. And you basically will will ask you to follow Wanderlust Knitter and follow the Lamb and Kid. Um, and then we'll draw a winner and we'll send you out the yarn and the pattern. So, um I'm beyond that, like beyond the giveaway. I mean, I still have more to talk about here, but I just, they are, were just so lovely to be around. And um, Sarah's husband, Bob was ringing everybody up. Like they were just so lovely. And uh, Sarah has opened a storefront. They, she lives in Bainbridge Island, Washington, which we're coming for you, Sarah, um, because um, we definitely want to do a, 
Pacific Northwest visit. Um, but anyway, so she, you can check out, we will have links below for both Wanderlust and Lamb and Kid. Um, so that was purchase number one. The second purchase I made was for what's called the cozy, uh, cozy cups. And I knit so these big. adorable hand warmers, fingerless gloves. And oh, oh I did, we didn't talk about, oh, we did talk about the big fluff is, is Surrey. But this, my friends, is cashmere. Mm. cashmere. So she, uh, Sarah did these adorable um, kits. So you got a skein of the, the base color, and then she did these adorable little cards with the contrast color. And this one, the pink is called um, Pop Rocks, and the green is called Chalet Chic. And her pattern is super simple, and she shows a pattern with one um, hand with stripes and the other solid, but you can do sort of whatever you want. I'm on my second um, cuff. And I decided to flip the, the stripe colors to do pink on the outside yeah. and green on the side. Um, so my plan is to wear these when I'm on the flower truck and my hands get cold and I can just have cozy yumminess. Um, and then the other thing you can do is you can just wear them as wrist warmers. You can just push them down and um, wear them like that. So this has been an absolute luxury to knit with. Uh, and this is on her base called Percy, which is, is DK, sport DK is what she said. So here she um, is looking very cute. I look to see if the kid is on her website. It's yeah. not, but the pattern is. Yeah. Well, she might need to get some patterns up or some kits up, but you can, you can talk to her about that. Um, yeah, there, there, there's the cozy cuff pattern. Um, but it, it has been, her yarn is just an absolute super luxury to knit with. This is hundred percent cashmere. Um, and I can't get enough of it. So that was purchase number two. Purchase number three. Are we, are we impressed people? I mean, Jaggy, are you impressed? Yeah, she I was. couldn't stop her. She was just, yeah, I was on fire. fire. I was, yeah. So I have had in my brain for a very long time that I want to knit the Nanil Chick Swancho by Caitlin Hunter. And you have your version is, mine. yeah, it's, um, knit out of plucky and i think sarah is um the mastermind behind the color scheme that you have for yours but i have been sort of waiting to find the perfect color combo and then i did so here it is just hold on just so we can it's show the your there okay. the oh yeah so beautiful so it's just this beautiful yoke um that, you know with arms coming off of the, you know i want to wear it today i know you should yeah, it's perfect fall thing, right? Yeah. Anyway, so the, my base, so this is also super luxury yarn. It's um, her Todd base, which is 65 yak and 35 cashmere. Hello, lucky me. Mm. I mean, your base is the same base and it's just, isn't it just most yeah. Like, amazing? Yeah, um, it's really fantastic. It's so my base color is called Island Bunny. And then the contrasting colors, I think what I'm going to do is where you're orange, I'm going to be pink. And this Perfect. is, taffy, right? Perfect. That's the taffy color. And then your green. Uh, your green will be my gold, which is called Bakelite. Mm -hmm. And then your black, is yours black or is it yeah, blue? Black. Yeah, it's black. It will be mine, this color, and it's called Loam. Yeah which I'm sure is not showing up, but it's very much a brown, um, gold, dark kind of hints of black in it. So I am- You do that Jack Hard technique. Where I know. Floats. I, I know. I, I was funny because I was looking at the Swan shows on Ravelry and of course yours popped up and I'm like, oh, look at this one. I'm like, oh, that's Jackie's. <laughs> and I saw your notes about, I wish I had known about this Jack Hard thing. So when I start this, we will definitely talk about that. And maybe, you know, you can walk me through it, but. Let's twin and go to Bainbridge Island, Caitlin. Oh, okay, let's do that. And Don't I'll worry. just, I'll have to knit like a pink, well, never mind. We'll talk about that. Okay. But yes. It's anyway, so incredible. I am so excited for this. So, so excited. So and that's your uh, next garment. My neck, yeah, I don't know if it'll be, I, I have a few things I have to knit before that. Okay. I feel like my next thing will be this one. Oh, okay, that's so good. Because I feel like it'll go fast and yeah. um, it'll be very satisfying. I want that too. I know you do, you should get one. 
Yeah. What color would you do? The orange? No, what I color? want like I like that. I don't I don't have anything like that. Yeah. All right. Well you can twin with me. Yeah, so it was pretty funny when like I was going to purchase the pink and then you all pretty much built a wall around me and said, no, you're going to knit this. I mean, they, they made me cry, people. Almost. Learned a, a, a photography technique. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, and we, we practiced it because, and it was to laugh. Well, that's the photo that you showed. Yep. So yeah. we just fake laughed and then took yes. a picture. Well, now you gave away that it didn't look like we were having fun. I know long. we were really miserable and we didn't have a good time. No. Caitlin was made to purchase all this stuff and they're just bullies. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, I, I, we, I mean, we had so much fun with Sarah and Lindsay and Caitlin and Bob. Um, and <laughs> like, I could have just stayed there all weekend. So they were just an absolute delight. And I love supporting happy, fun creative people. And Kate, so just to chime in about Caitlin and Wanderlust Knitter, like you have to check, she has her own website. You have to check out her patterns. Like the majority of what Sarah had on display at the Lamb and Kid what, were um, Sarah's patterns. Some of them were, were, I mean, were Caitlin's patterns. And of course, some of them were Sarah's because Sarah's an amazing designer in her own right. But Caitlin, I don't know her, her, everything she knits just speaks to me. Yeah. Uh, She's so, and she's so cute. She has her own um, blog and she styles her knits and like, there are links to like what else she wears with it. So clearly she's doing something right there. Um, anyway, so we absolutely adored. Um, I mean, look at that. I mean, so cute. So cute. She was very, she had a sweater that she came out with that weekend that she was wearing too. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, and she just, they just posted on the Lamb and Kid um, another shawl that, um, that they're doing kits for that I think is in cashmere. So it's just, yeah, it's, her, her yarn. Like, look at her in her. I know that's she called that her birthday sweater, I think. So, yeah. Cute. So shout out to all of them again in our show notes, we will have. So I, cute. I know. Stop with the adorableness, Caitlin. Come she, on. What? It looks like, I don't know if I've got this right, that she sells products do maybe on here that's um, what i'm saying i think she i think she's an influencer so she links to things that is it the like you know it thing like oh know. okay yeah. this yeah. is a beautiful website we are yeah that's impressed so cool yeah yeah so um caitlin lives in um i think she lives in philadelphia hmm. and then Lindsay and sarah live in bainbridge island so um anyway we should start planning our our vacation there uh, but that was anyway that was um such an incredible booth and experience and i can't i just love that i have th you know essentially three projects to of theirs to because i'm not ready to give it up anytime soon so yeah yeah so well, that's where i first saw um for me, a thrill was getting to see Gudrid Johnson. I saw her at Rhinebeck, but she also at Brooklyn General had all of the knits. Yeah. So this was what I was sort of holding out for was this sweater and I got yeah. to try it on. I got, that was so exciting for me. Um, it looked so adorable on you. It was like that sweater was knit for you. It's funny, is it that that image looks like black and white? It's called Zoom, pulling all the I color. It just sucks <laughs> all the color out. I hate well, Zoom, but I shouldn't we, say that anymore. We know that. Hashtag not sponsored by Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Um, no, that, that sample looked so amazing. I have to say, when I saw this image, when it first came on across Instagram, I immediately was like, oh my gosh, this, th I don't think there ever existed a sweater that is any more you than that sweater. Oh, I mean, you. and you put it on, it was like, yeah, of course it looks fabulous because it was knit for you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, so I, then I, I'm not trying to skip around or skip ahead. I have two things to say, but the following day, you know, I, Amy was there from La Bien de May. I didn't talk to her very much the first day, but then the second day when we were at Cake Palooza, we were just, you know, we were there all day together. So we ended up talking about this and, and she's, you know, and I talked and I'm going to do this in her 
either Helix or Felix. I can't remember which one, but that's on its route, on its way to me now. But also, there are a million really cute patterns in here. Yeah. And of course, it's all in Jameson. And I was just looking last night, and it turns out Firefly Fiber here, in, which is my LYS, now has Jameson, which That's is exciting. very excited. So for whatever reason, I'm in this mood. So if I end up loving, I love this too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and there's one other one that I really, oh, I love I, the beret. We tried the beret on. That was They're so cute. Awesome. Planer one. Yeah. Um, yeah, the beret was beautiful. The hat's beautiful. Yeah. So, or is it called a tam? Is it a tam or a beret? I don't know. I do okay. not know, but um, we've talked, we talked about this. Look at this with just, you know, even doing the lace solid. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that scallop bottom. Yeah. yeah. So, so beautiful. That's from like the, the lace doing that. Yeah. God, it's gorgeous. So I, not that I would ever knit two of them. Look at the paper in here. I mean, they don't, the whole. No, beautiful. It's such beautiful. a beautiful book. I'm and she both. was so lovely. I mean, we can talk about that, but um, here she is. So lovely. Oh, she, but her hair is cut really short right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And this so. must be her mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful read. I mean, you've heard us talk about it. You hear everybody talking about it yeah. because it's amazing. Yeah. That's sort of my, I don't have anything to show for it, but that's my next knit. That's the thing I'm excited to knit after rhyme back as like a garment that's coming up. Yeah. Yeah, no, that looks amazing. Um uh so one of the the other things I want to chat about uh, about our experience at um Woolen Folk was running into um Eliza Eliza Roff who has put out she's an incredible photographer that has put out a book called On the Farm. Yeah and Jackie and I both got a set of postcards of some of her, these are her baby animals. Like, look at those, look at those. And, oh, so she, a book. yep. So she has a book that's called, that's called On the Farm and it's um, heritage and heralded animal breeds and portraits and stories. Um, her photographs are just beyond stunning. The other thing we learned about her is that she has a whole set of forever stamps of her heritage breeds that are available, which, I mean, I just want to buy them and give them to people. Um, but she, so her book is for sale from 10 Speed Press. Uh, she has these lovely postcards. She um, wears she, jumpsuits. Yeah, we, 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 we bonded and we were all wearing our jumpsuits. Um, but her, she's so lovely and her art is just absolutely stunning. So this was something that we, you know, we weren't expecting to encounter and just absolute shout out to her again. We'll link her in the show notes, but I want to frame these photos. I mean, they're just so beautiful. Yeah, they really are. They're so sweet. They're mm -hmm. baby. Mm -hmm. Um, so that way I think was, that was pretty much my haul from, from there. Well, Did you? The other thing that just, I guess I'll show the pattern now, because that's where I saw Jan, and yes. she was wearing from Forever Yarn, Forever Yarns, Doyle's Down. She's always the most elegant woman, and everything she wears is stunning. And, and this picture will do nothing for you, because it's just, but she was wearing this sweater. It's designed by Pickles, but the sleeve detail oh, is yeah. exquisite. Exquisite. And it's just one of these fingering weight held with mohair. I'll show you another picture of it. I think I put her, I'm sure she's in our stories. Mm -hmm. I want to show you because it's funny because we have nine, I don't, you don't have to look at these, but um, some people are on YouTube and they're not on Instagram. But if you go to Instagram and you go to the homepage, these little buttons, like you press right there, that says Rhinebeck, and then you press on it. And it'll show all the pictures we took from Ryan Beck. And yeah. some people don't know how to do that. So I just thought I'd show you. Anyway. Yeah, and we love, we do that pretty much for all the places we travel so that you can sort of look back and, and feel a part of that experience. Yeah. So here I am wearing that sweater. I know, look at you, yeah. 
but I, I think I, and here's the photographer that we were just yeah. talking about. Yeah. And I was, I think I have a, yeah, here she is in that sweater. Oh yeah. Look at her. Doesn't it look amazing? It's such a great, oh, you just, there's just, the venue. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, so good. Yeah, that was, she's amazing. And everything she picks is just so highly styled and beautiful. Yeah. That was another place we want to go. Oh yes. We have plans. I yeah. guess. Yeah. That's goes into tomorrow. Yeah. So what did we do after that? I mean, was that, that um, Thursday? Yeah, that was, I mean, that we was that this lovely woman who we were just waiting for, you know, you're always just waiting for an Uber. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, um, and totally. I'm trying to her, she was like, can I give you a ride? Yeah. Which was um, so sweet. I'm trying to, I have a picture of her. I know. And I was just trying to look up her name too. Um, it's just when we have, when we're talking about so many people, I, um, she lives not too far away from me. So we have plans to um, get together. Don't we have a photo? Here she is. Yeah. Yeah. She's tagged there, right? Yep. And she thought we were. Oh, screaming. Mary Beth, right? I think it's Mary. What's her? It's MB Mary Beth. Shaddix. Yeah. Look at the sweater um, she knit. She went yeah. to Steinbeck all by herself. Ugh. Yeah, she drove. Did she? She didn't. Drove yeah, she up from the drive. south. Yeah. Um, she, yeah, she drove from Alabama. I'm yeah. Sure she, um, yeah, where does she? Mary Beth. Yep. Um, yeah, she dro She knit that sweater and then um, what did, did she double knit the the saying at the bottom, it was just beautiful. Anyway, but yes, Mary Beth, we were sitting basically in a dark parking lot waiting for our Uber and she drove by. She's like, Caddy Jax, do you need a ride? Yeah. Which we would have so taken her up on that. If our rather, for sure. It. And then she left and she circled back and she's like, are you sure? We're like, yes. Yeah. Um, but that That's was so enough. sweet, the way people I know. And it was so amazing at, to like run into her at Rhinebeck pretty much five minutes after we, did you see her in the bathroom? Is that where you ran into her? Or did no, we run just into outside on the, on the street? Yeah. Of course we made a bathroom break as soon as we walked through the gates um, of Rhinebeck. But. I have a, I have a bitter story that's off topic that I need to get off my chest. Oh, okay. Speaking of being picked up in the dark, I walk in the dark all the time. Yeah. This week I was so mad because I was walking alone in the dark at night, but I walk in the street because that's the brightest part, you know, and I face traffic and I stay close to the cars. So, you know, you would have to hit the parked cars to hit me, you know, and you'd have to, if you were driving, you'd have to veer across traffic to hit me. Well, anyways, and this man drives up to me and yells at me for being in the street. Like, how come you're in the street? And not only is he a strange man talking to a woman who's alone at night and like, what made him think that that was appropriate? Yeah. So I had my headphones on and I just acted like I didn't hear him and I kept going, but clearly I haven't kept going because I'm still thinking about it. Like, okay. yeah, Sorry. yeah, I know, but, but there's just um there's so little daylight you know now that yeah. and so oftentimes i have to go at night and that's just the way it goes so i do wear some neon and i that's another thing about me i love natural light so i love i don't like to bring flashlights or anything like that because i love to see like did you see last night how the moon set right after the sunset it just must have it must have risen in the middle of the day so the sun set and it lit up and the moon was just this sliver it was so beautiful and it was all wow. lit by the sunset and then it set beautiful yeah it was gorgeous yeah. okay yeah, back no, I, to Rhinebeck and off of my rants okay good well, we can edit that out well all I right. went home though and I went home and I gave Heron happened to stop by and I gave yeah. him the safety lecture about he's a threat no matter what to any woman because he's a man and that he should always cross the street and he shouldn't talk to them and he should you know give them space etc when they're out at night by themselves walking in the middle of the road with nothing neon on not the middle of the road the side of the road i know i have to say when i when i'm driving in my neighborhood i am always amazed at how people are walking their dogs in the road 
I think there is a sense that people can see you and you can't see. And I, I always find it jarring when somebody's dressed very dark and doesn't stand out. That's my I know, take. but if they're I not know. in the lane you're in, who cares? Totally you would have it. to be driving in the- I get it, I totally get it. I'm with you and he scared you and you don't need that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. here, that was okay, my- good public service announcement. Perfect. So anyway, so we got back to, yeah. finally got our Uber, got back to our Airbnb and got to hang out with all of our friends that we have been um, waiting to spend time with for two years, right? It's our Marco Polo group. Um, for those of you who don't know, Marco Polo is a video app chat thing that we've been going with um, this group of women for two years. And this was our first opportunity to really see each other since 2019, right? Mm -hmm. So we had a lovely time catching up with them. And, uh, and then, yeah, then we did it all again. So the next day was Cake Palooza. Uh, which everyone in our group pretty much had some role at Cake Palooza. So Cake Palooza was hosted um, by our lovely friend um, Alyssa of Cake Wool, uh, and she hosted this fiber event at her property. So she has her husband has a workshop, and they have a huge parking lot around the workshop. And so there were all of these vendors, these really unbelievably curated vendor experiences at Cake Palooza. I, I have to say shout out to Alyssa for pulling this off because it was a new event and um, there's a lot that's already going on in Ryan, Ryan Beck weekend. And she, I mean, I think her event was off the charts. Amazing. Yeah. She um, had it as a ticketed event. Everything was outside. I would say the majority of people were masked up. And so she timed the ticketed events. So I don't know, did they have two hours each? Is that yeah. how long? Yeah. Uh, and we were there um, basically to meet and greet and schmooze and meet, uh, you know, just connect with people. And I, I just loved that, that we could just walk around and chat. And, um, and it was so lovely um, how many people we got to see in person who we've been connecting with, you know, on Instagram or YouTube. So that was amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, that was an all day event and we had great weather. It started off chilly. You and I were like, what the whole Rhinebeck weekend, right? Was this huge thing of what are we going to wear? Because it was going to be far warmer than any of us wanted it to be. Cause we want to wear our sweaters. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, did you had, did you wear two different things or one? I don't even know why I had, I think I brought my Fox thoughts along to show yeah. Amy from Lobby yeah. Animal, but I didn't think it would be cool enough to wear, which yeah. was what I was going to wear anyways. But it yeah. was cold when we got there. It was. So I brought my um, my like a bird um, sweater that I borrowed back from my mom. So I was able to wear that. Um, maybe I should go grab that to show. Yeah, I did have it on. All right, I'll go grab it. You, yeah. you chat while I do that. Okay, I'll chat. Um, chat. Yeah, so Nick Collage was there, which we will talk about Nick Collage too in the knit along. But it was really fun to be able to to try on all of her samples and I took several pictures of Caitlin in her knit collage and right next to her was Mermaid's Pearl and Caitlin got a bunch of felt flowers from Oh Lincoln. yeah I should show those. Yeah while you're up and wandering around hitting things. Um, <laughs> but I it was actually my first time of getting to be in Chelsea Yarns booth. And that was like, so amazing. Her colors are just so exquisite. I, I didn't do a ton of shopping though, because I have so much, you know, that I'm already knitting. So my biggest thing was talking with people. There she is. There I am. I feel like I'm wearing a pillow. Um, this is my loopy mango, like a bird sweater that I knit for my mom a year ago for her birthday. And then was like, mom, can I borrow it for Ryan Beck? And she's under the, um, she thinks that I should just keep it. I don't know. She's like, it's so much more you, Kaylin, than me, which, or you should have it, which, you know, in my brain was like, I was excited. And then I had this kind of like bitchy daughter thing, like what, you don't like my knit mom? Like it went from oh, Kaylin. so excited to have it to, why wouldn't you want it, mom? Um, but anyway, it was super fun to wear. 
Um, it is like, if you want like the serious find your fluff knit along. Oh, true. This is it because it's just a simple bulky knit sweater. I use their dream yarn. Um, and so you just knit a simple cardigan and then you add, you know, 3000 pieces of, of uh, fringe. But I have was, my yarn. I just, again, that was what I was saying when you were yeah. gone. I have so much yarn. Yeah, I know. We all do. But anyway, you were, you touched on um, Mermaid's Pearl. And Lizzie, I mean, did you talk about how amazing her booth was? I just Lizzie, started to talk about the flowers. Okay, but Lizzie um, ha owns the Mermaid's Pearl in Rhode Island. And she has curated the most beautiful yarns. She's so good at picking out patterns. I mean, everything she picks, um, I want to knit. Um, but she also has these wool felted flowers and it was, she had this beautiful display of them on um, chid chicken wire and they were all hanging out. I think everybody thought it was just her display. So, um, but I had to purchase them because obviously, you know how I feel about flowers. Um, but she has, um, she has these available on her website, but I absolutely love them. Oh my God. Speaking of love. Yes. So this yeah. is something Caitlin and I both want to knit, of course. Yeah. So this has been on my list of, you know, my queue for a long time. But again, Lizzie knocked it out of the park. Did you buy yarn for it? No. I okay. have the book, which you so it's talk, called you the, I think it's the, the what? You talk and I'll find is it. Called, I think it's called pressed flower shawl or flower shawl. Um, and the original design is knit out of very rustic yarn, which makes sense because it has, um, you know, it, it has all the details and the cabling in it to create these flowers. But she used Ilamani, um, and I can't, I think that's the yarn brand name. Um, yeah, and what's it called? Wildflowers. Um, anyway, but she used this Illimani yarn that is so soft and cozy. I would equate it to um, very similar to Wolf Folk. Um, what did we knit the Weekender out of? Or not the Weekender, the... Luft? Yeah, Luft. Um, it's just super, super soft. And I couldn't believe how well the flower details showed up in this soft, soft, soft yeah. yarn. Oh, and her drape to it, like, ugh. You know what I have in my stash? What? Might work. It takes some um, 880 meters of DK weight yarn. I still have the Julie Aslane um, melange. Oh, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, in off white. Oh, it'd be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, what's great about this pattern is it's knit in the round. Um, and then you steak it and the steak becomes the fringe. So the steak is super oh, wide. Oh, that's so cool. And then you cut it up and that's the fringe. That's so fun. Yeah, I know. I can't wait to knit it. So I, I told Lizzie, I said, Lizzie, end of November, call James and suggest. Oh, that's a good a great idea. Great Christmas gift. Oh, so, so beautiful. And it's from yeah. here. And yeah. she got that yarn that Lizzie has. I mean, she has incredible, she has incredible yarns. Another yeah. place we want to go. She says yeah. come in the summer though. Yeah, no, Rhode Island is so perfect in the summer, but I, she has an incredible website. And it's funny because when she was starting her website during COVID, she had Lily and Isabella work on it, which I think is really mm -hmm. funny. Mm -hmm. so, anyway, that, the, yeah. So uh, Cake Palooza was just, I mean, a love fest. We got to see I mean, we, I, we definitely purchased some things there. So we saw Tanny Casey, um, oh, yeah. makes, where did I put it? Beautiful, beautiful, yes. beautiful bags. Um, and you got- uh, Rifle yeah. Paper Company. Pat. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, just, the quality of the bags, I mean, the, nice. the bottom is wax canvas. So that's really nice to be able to put that down and know it's not gonna, you know, um, leather handles and, and it you know huge sweater quantity i mean i just mm -hmm. um it even holds knit collage <laughs> yeah. um yeah i mean her bags this is your first tanny casey bag right yes it's yeah. not yours no it is mine i just didn't know if you had one from before i think what it was we had hoped to see her two years ago at the rhinebeck bazaar but we never made our way in That's there right. so, um by the way did you get me a t-shirt She's still out of them. Oh, okay. You'll live. Okay. Um, yeah, but I mean, we just got a skein to make hats. 
Yeah. Which I think is so funny. Like I took a photo of all my um, yarn back, yarn back, yarn. Ryan back? Yarn back. That was a good shot. Yarn back. I like it. <laughs> I was like, why does this sound wrong? <laughs> my yarn back haul. And all of it is like every color that's in this, which is her Chapel Hill colorway, which is your, what's your Chelsea's coupe. Yeah. I mean, was like, it's all in every color that's in here is also part of my stash. I hardly so. ever knit hats, but did one skein will knit a hat, right? Yes. I think what I'm going to knit is the everyday slouchy beanie because the other versions I have have been um, fingering stranded with mohair. Mm -hmm. And I think just this by itself will be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I just want to knit a basic pink hat. Like this is just so pretty. I know her yarn is her. Christina's color sense is off the charts. Amazing. Off yeah. the charts. Amazing. And everything she does and touches and styles like that photo I took of her wearing um, Amanda Solomon's hand spun headband. I mean, she, she's just she beautiful. and Amanda Solomon have a similar incredible color sense. Totally. Like, totally. They just are like, color divas yeah yeah um, so we got to spend time with uh christina and tad or red bank mike um mm -hmm. so that was super fun and yeah i mean this it was is so feel good i got this just as like a souvenir because because i didn't know i wasn't sure what i wanted and i was kind of just overwhelmed yeah. by how beautiful it all was you know what yeah. i mean and so yeah I, got this that's sort of how i generally feel when i go to any of these events it's just sort of it's such overstimulation that i think the only way i've realized that i can do well in terms of purchasing is having a specific pattern in mind i think that's why the swan show for me is mm -hmm. finding that bait like the colors finally i was like yep done don't even need to think about it. it's right here but i will oh i do want to can i just show that though because i was inspired but the colorway that I chose, I was inspired by a, a, a shawl that they had on display at Lamb and Kid. I just want to see if I can find that. Um, because okay. that, that's what helped me decide on the color. Oh, here it is. So like, just, just to give an idea of like what I'm going for with the swan show, like I saw that shawl knit up and I was like, yep, that's it. You know, so I love, walking in and feeling like somebody else has it all figured out and you don't even have to think about it you just know it's fabulous right um, speaking of fabulous there was also um clinton hill cashmere did you talk about that yet i have not talked about that so are you ready to talk about that <laughs> are you ready to talk about that jackie rose so i was hanging out in the clinton hill cashmere booth just raving on and on to Rebecca about how much I love my Winslow sweater, which was the one thing I purchased way back at VKL in 2019. Yeah. And again, it was just so incredible to be around her samples and to see the her palette. See, yeah. I love about palettes, like for instance, Melissa from Sonder Yarns, formerly yes. Espas Trico, we were wearing her sweaters the next day at Rhinebeck. She her has yarn. an amazing, yeah, her yarn. Yeah. Um, she has an amazing palette, but it's different mm -hmm. than like Christina's. Yes. And Rebecca has an amazing palette, but it's different. Pro yeah. Soho has amazing palette, but it's different. But it's, I do think it's fascinating the palette signatures of different people. Totally. And so Clinton Hill Cashmere's palette is sophisticated. At the same time, it's it's sat, you know it's very cosmopolitan, very yeah. chic, very uh, just it's just divine. And so we went over and we tried on all the knit collage. You and Rebecca are making the same knit collage, by the way. Oh, you loop it up. And loop it up. Mm -hmm. yep. And then we started talking about the half and half triangle wrap. And she was like, do you think you could do a half and half triangle wrap in, in cashmere? And <laughs> you know, I don't know. Can you? 
it was all very hypothetical. And I was helping her think about her half and half triangle wrap was what I thought. And just, we were talking through it. And then the conversation kept flowing and she, and she was like, well, I want to make a pink and red one. And, and somehow it shifted to, I would make the pink and red one. And I thought to myself, sure, I'll make you a pink and red one. Cause you're so fabulous. It'd be a thrill. And she's like, no, you make it for you, <laughs> which, uh, so, so you are. Yep. So there I was being presented with the problem of figuring out how to make a half and half wrap in bespoke DK. And I did solve. <laughs> and it's, um, it's crazy. So this is. Oh, a, look at that. It's like twinning with me back there. Almost. Totally. Right. So yeah. this is a Clinton Hill cashmere. Wait, did you finish it? No, no, I didn't oh. finish it. So this is this is the red part, but wow, you know, wow, like it is nearly done. I have, I mean, it's not nearly done. I have the pink side done, you guys. But that went really fast, right? What size needles did you knit it on? Eights. Okay. And so what I did was I used. So Rebecca, by the way, of course, in. Thank you so much. This is so incredible. <laughs> I can't even believe it. Um, this is um, what I did was I knit 190 stitches. I cast on 190, like the small size, and I did it on eights. And it has... How many skeins did that take for the pink? Um, it's six skeins per side. So... This is a very luxury knit, everybody. It's a luxury knit. Um, and it is, I will say, it has the similar fabulous drapiness. Yeah. But it's yeah. going to be warmer, I think. And Oh, my, of course it will be. And it's just like. And you'll be sleeping on it. I know. It, so I, I worried that it wouldn't be, uh, I don't know. What did I worry about? I worried that it would be just like a blanket and not wearable, but it's. Oh yeah. Deeply, gee, what a problem to have. I know, but it's deeply wearable. So here's the yeah. size. That's so it's amazing. pretty much the size of the regular one. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. all I can say is I can't wait for you guys to see it not on zoom because zoom is the worst, but it is divine. Absolutely. Yeah. It looks amazing. Divine. So if you're, in the market for DK1, I can tell, you know, try 190 Google. stitches on size eight and try cashmere. Why yeah. Not? <laughs> Why not? Why yeah. not? And, uh, and I got, yeah. Rebecca gifted me these lovely skeins. I just had to look up her colorway because on her, um, on her tag, she doesn't name them. She just numbers them. Mm -hmm. But it's, this is the, um, I tried on her hat, which was just so beautiful. This is passion pink, which is just absolutely incredible color. Oh, yeah, it's so beautiful. I have to say, I do, do, do love it with red. That was completely Rebecca's idea. Yeah, I love it. I love yeah. red and pink. Like I to me, too. That's a great it's just combo. like the quintessence of Rebecca right there to do that combination like the lower contrast, subtle, elegant, deeply fabulous. Everything about her sil silhouettes, like when I did the Winslow sweater before or her hats, cause that, you know, everything about her is just the silhouettes are simple and they just show off the exquisite fiber and the exquisite colors. Well, and she, she's really been, um, what is she, she, she posts on a regular basis, basically she calls it her capsule wardrobe. So she showcases sort of the knit and how to wear it and how just these very, very simple, elegant patterns can, you know, elevate anything. So she does a really great job. Absolutely. So yes. Yeah, so it's been, um, cashmere. I know it's been like a nothing but cashmere month. since we've gotten back from Rhinebeck, which I know it's going to be hard to go back to regular wool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I honestly, oh, it's, it's, us. Like, 
I still haven't knit with Surrey yet. So like, this is going to be my, I, I think I'm just a little bit scared. Like I knit these cashmere mitts and you know, I highly recommend making a splurge to get yourself one skein to work on something that is just that soft and cozy. Well, those mitts seem perfect because they're yeah. right where you. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it was so cute. I saw, um, Leslie friend who, you know, she has the podcast, a friend to knit with, and she has such incredible style. And I just saw a little quick snippet of her uh, on Instagram wearing this jean jacket. And she had, you know, her, these, some cuffed, um, you know, hand warmers or whatever. And she just had them underneath her jean jacket cuff. And I was like, oh yes, I'm going to be Leslie today. Nice. You know? I almost wore my jean jacket because of that. But anyway, um, yeah, there's just something about having cashmere in those, like, you know, just those yeah, for your wrist, like that sensitive place. Do you think Isabella would be able, you remember how she once had you knit? Yeah. Would she be hand. able to wear cashmere? Well, she was over and I had her put on the cuffs and she was like, oh, I, she's just really sensitive. I don't, it's fine. I don't need to knit her cashmere. True. Um, I haven't even I, finished her Christmas. Whatever. I am a complete underachiever when it comes to accessories. I know it's hard. They're hard. To, yeah. I will say there is something also kind of daunting about the fact that you have to knit two of everything. Well, even hats though. I'm an underachiever, but hats are You don't really like to wear hats though. Well, I do like to be warm though. So if I, know, I but you to, like, I had knit that cute Clinton Hill cashmere beret and i don't know where it is that's the other thing like yeah debbie so debbie has this whole drawer of her hats yeah. and i think if you like had a whole drawer of hats instead of just one like yeah. i have like one and it gets too big Get on I, it. I mean i think you could whip something up and, um okay is there anything else from cake palooza that we're missing let me just think um uh Oh, I do want to say, I mean, first of all, we met so many amazing new to us people. I, I want to just give a shout out to it's Kristen and Dean, right? The yes. couple in the whole freaking world um, that we got to chat with them extensively. Um, and she is, um, now I'm blanking. Cozy made things. Cozy made things. Yes. And so she happened to be one of our winners, as you mentioned. I mean, mm -hmm. So we met her at Cake Palooza. And then did our random drawing of um, of our half wrap, and she happened to be one of the winners. And she and her husband are just adorable. And then the next day when we saw them at Rhinebeck, he was wearing a kilt and an amazing hand knit. And they're just you have to check out Christy Glass. They're they're on her mm -hmm. um, show me your Rhinebeck. Um, but anyway, they were lovely. I mean, there was just, there were so many, and I know I'll, I'm, I, I couldn't possibly list everybody, but there were just so many lovely connections that we made at each of these. And I think that's my takeaway every time is just like, oh, those deep connections you make with people, even if mm -hmm. it's like a five minute conversation. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's so cute. Like I, I'm having it happen to me right now, but I'm still gonna talk right through it because I get lost in our names. But then like you'll have a little mini connection in New York with somebody, you know, like our 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 spontaneous what knit was up. it called? Knit, knit. When you yeah, when you meet up with meet knitter. Up. Yeah, yeah. It was a you know, spontaneous meetup meet of two yeah. people in yes. a park that would only fit four people anyway. Yes. <laughs> a little pocket park, yeah. Pocket park, exactly. Lara and um Right. My brain is just I know, just but anyways, we saw her Stephanie and she was like, she was so adorable and everything, but she was like trying to act like, well, she wasn't trying to do anything. She didn't want to, in, she didn't want to impose herself, but she didn't realize that now she's our people. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. So I was like, wait a minute. Where are you going? Get back over here. Like, yeah. yeah and, no. Blog well, over her. A couple that I can get us off of you. Yeah, exactly. And then there was a couple, and the we uh, met at Black Mountain. 
Isn't well, that yeah, Holly oh, yeah. Blue and her yeah, husband? Holly, there Holly and her husband, David. But I'm also thinking about the couple that came and the husband said, you need to go bring Jackie and Caitlin Diet mm -hmm. Cokes. And so she found us a Cape Balloons and gave us, I mean, there were just so many moments like that where people just being unbelievably generous and sweet and yeah. adorable. And like um, seeing Margaret again, you know, oh, we yeah. met Margaret at Rhinebeck. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think yeah. Margaret's just like a soul sister. She's just totally. so incredible. So, totally. Yeah. And then I, we didn't get any, did you get any time on the yarn birds truck with Robin? No, I didn't even, like, I didn't, yeah. no, I didn't even step foot on it. I felt I so bad. I didn't even yeah. see her once. Yeah, like, it was it was a whirlwind. And like yeah. we didn't see Debbie and Susie the whole weekend. Yeah, they were like, whatever. We'd see them like, oh, there, yeah, there they are. are. Well, you can always see them in their skirts. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, but Cake Palooza was amazing, amazing, amazing. So congratulations to everybody that was there and to um, Alyssa and her husband, like her whole family, they were just so amazing and made oh, that. Oh, I got some yarn there though, which oh. I can't believe oh. I bought yarn. Like, I don't know. Really? I mean, well, I just, so the Max's once in floral sweater. Yes. I've, I've thought nice. about it in a hundred different ways. And it, I think it was the end of the day and I just like went in and bought yarn for it. Like whatever. Yeah. Did you see somebody else there wearing one that made you? No, I've always wanted it. Yeah, and I, but, but, but I don't feel like I'm going to knit it right away. So this is, the, this like affect that you might be picking up on me is just like, I bought yarn for a sweater. I have no time to knit. <laughs> Are you frozen? Cause I, I, well, sure I didn't hear anything you said, but I'm sure it was riveting. I said, I bought yarn for a sweater. I have no time to knit. Oh, right. Well, none but of us have time. Here oh. is um, Vita life. And it the base would be. Um, I know it's amazing yarn, but I can't tell by the. <laughs> merino cashmere nylon and yeah. then i had you know you need a third color and i was thinking i would do some surrey for the third color oh look at that yeah oh because you this had that way. okay i have this yeah that's that would, this would be the floral part and this would be the base beautiful and if i knit it up it yeah. would be really great when i knit it up someday someday some, this goes in the someday yeah, totally. I kind of hate myself for buying yarn right now. You should. <laughs> I hate you for buying yarn right now. Um, this is my, I, I'm jumping ahead. Oh, yeah. I need to jump ahead. I need this to be the yarn monster. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. where we have all of our thoughts about whether we should get it, whether we should finish, you know what I mean? So we, Caitlin and I, I think, was this the only thing we had time to buy at actual Rhinebeck? Yes. We bought Yarn Monsters. Yetis. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. So I think I'm going to hang this up in front of my knit, my yarn cabinet. That's awesome. Yeah, I got one, a little bird, but yes. that was It can nice. watch over my thoughts and okay. monitor them. Uh-huh, I'm sure he'll keep you out of that cabinet. <laughs> Girls can dream. Uh, okay. And, well, and you know, I guess I'll just say like the other girls that were hanging out there, of course, were twin aura knits. Erica oh. and Jess, and they're so adorable and amazing. Oh my gosh. They're like, I mean, of course they're adorable on Instagram and on their podcast, but they are so, so freaking adorable. And that was just so much fun to hang out with them. Yeah. They've got all that young energy that we yeah. think we have but you know after this we'll both be taking a three hour nap yeah I like I I asked her just this week because she was like Rhinebeck was so great and she had all this like positive energy around it and I'm not saying I'm I, I mean I feel that it was wonderful but as an older person <laughs> I just feel so exhausted too yeah and yeah. I was like instead of saying to her immediately how I feel about it I was like oh tell me more about your experience and she, and then she was went on about how fabulous it was for her which was good to hear yeah and we had a fabulous experience too um the funny thing is is I am an introvert so the and I love people but I'm an introvert so and there's no time to refuel no so that's what it is yeah totally mm -hmm. um yeah, so then that night 
extroverted introvert in those sent those situations. Right. But I think it's just, I, I, I adore people, but I want to connect with them in a real way and all of that. So. so you were distracted by the fact that you saw a bird out your window. I see James with his loppers and he's trimming the tree because I told him not to trim. Oh, it's still blooming. Men and pruning equipment. It is a dangerous really? combination. This is what happens when you podcast. Yeah, anyway. exactly. Thanks. Yeah, I pretty soon we'll see him in this shrub right here. So when you see him here, we're in trouble. He's going to be in trouble. Okay. Okay. So then that night is when we went and we picked the winner and posted mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. And that was yeah. all very exciting. And then we went to Rhinebeck the next day. What? Oh, he's, sorry. He's waving at me. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm sure his little face is going to like peer in the window because James likes to have his cameo. Yeah, I know. He likes to be a part of this. What do the people say about me? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, um, so yeah we're he's actually, back now, Caitlin. He was a little yeah. bit put out that we didn't allow him, allow him to come to Rhinebeck. He wants to come. I'm like, you would like to come for like five minutes and then you'd be done. Well, he wants to be one of those yarn husbands, but he that, I get to be your yarn husband. So he's, he's, I have that role. Yeah, you're hard. Yeah, well, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway, so yeah, we drew the winners. We went to bed. Some of us slept. Some of us did not. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I wake up to you having posted a million things on Instagram. I was like, oh, she didn't sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, well, yeah, that's I, the other thing is, uh, you know, I go through the event and I, I definitely feel like I want to bring you all along, you know, so it just, it just, how is that going to happen? Freak, people. She's a total freak to travel with in these circumstances. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. So, but so look at the stories because they take some yeah. effort to put together. Know. Yeah, yeah, no, we, yeah, put a lot of time. But we hope you enjoy them and don't look at them if you don't want to, but they're there. For yeah, yeah, no, we just, we want us, we do what we can to share as much as possible, um, but it is hard to share everything. And I mean, we would love to be walking around with a video camera and all, it, but it's just really hard to do all that and be present for the people that are there and, right. you know, and well, enjoy that's, ourselves. Yeah. That's, I, good Fortunately, there are a lot of people who go to Rhinebeck and shoot that kind of video. Yeah. But I realized like we didn't like we went into we met a woman. We had an encounter with two people that we were really excited to show you and we put stories up about it. Um, a woman who was a hat designer and we yeah. put a story about her on our feed. I, I will link her. In the, it's linked in the show notes. OK. Uh, it's. And, um, Good. Caitlin's looking for it. I mean, we would love to go visit her in her studio and see her process and make, and you look, you know, it was just so fun to try on her hat. She was so yeah. generous. And, um, but anyway, find her right now, but I, I know her last name is Hertz, but I'm forgetting her first name. Um, yeah, she's in our stories too. So, you know, I'll show you just to bring it up. <clears throat> And what I'm getting at is that we don't have an opportunity then to do those kinds of videos where we're showing you the stalls and everything because we're talking to people. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, and Rhinebeck is typically like horrible Wi-Fi and it just like was really yeah. hard. Yeah, no, but if you were trying to like do a video blog of the experience, uh -huh. it would be, yeah. the experience would be Caitlin and I talking to people and not seeing anything this time around. And that's right. fine, you know, like, yeah. Because yeah. what did we miss during a pandemic? We missed people. Yeah. It wasn't oh. like we missed stuff. We missed people. Yeah. Um, I'll find you her. I just want to go to this young lady. Hand me oh, yeah. Every time we saw her, we oh. loved her. She's in her sweater that she did. Olga, right? Yeah. yeah. And this is in Lavender Loon yarn. And she's so beautiful. We saw her both places, both days. Yeah, um, she, um, she, she uh, had a pattern, the herbalist swan show that came out and she teamed up with um, Primrose and Lavender 
and lavender yeah. loon. Yeah. But here's the hat that the hat lady. Yeah. And this is it, Caitlin in her hat. What's the woman's name? What's her hat? Shoo! I'm sorry. Shoo, excuse me. Shoo, Jennifer Hortz. Jennifer Hortz. Okay. So here she comes. Yeah. Like she's on our stories if you want to find out more about her. There's a whole video. I, yeah. I am trying. No, she's this incredible milliner. Like I ran, so Jackie, you were chatting with somebody else and I saw this woman in this hat and was like, oh my gosh, tell me about your hat. Oh, I just happened to be the milliner that made that hat. So she is so fabulous. And she does, so you can briefly see the little hat pin she has on there. She has, um, she calls them fascinators and she does just incredible little pins that go with her hats. Like, um, so we hope to visit her in New York um, yeah. and hear all the things, but yeah, are you, that, that, she was incredible. So beautiful, so beautiful. And, so that was a fun encounter. And the the one encounter that kind of blew my mind was when we met Squid Me Knits. Yes. <laughs> Who, um, you know, she just started a whole, I, I immediately went home and signed up on her Patreon because she oh, has cool. started a school and for vintage knits, but she's inspired us forever, ever since we got back into watching knitting podcasts and yeah. things like that. Yeah. And and when she met us, she said that we inspire her, which we couldn't believe. So yeah. that was yeah. that was so fun. Um, so fun. Yeah. yeah. And we got to, you know, go bother Christy. And Christy is right where Christy films on the top of the hill by the fence is far more beautiful than you know, where we had our meetup, but oh, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think that a lot of people have their meetups at that other location. And for whatever reason, they call it the hill. It's not as much of the hill as where the cider donuts are. And we right. did have There's a hill further. I don't even know the cardinal directions there, but. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so our friend Laura, who was going to be part of the half rap, was on the other hill. So sorry, Laura. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure there were a few other people, but, um, but yeah, Christy was situated in the most beautiful setting, getting ev all the video content for, um, tell me about your Rhinebeck sweater, which has already been posted. So go check that out. If you yeah. haven't, um, we got to spend some significant time with Christy on that video. So we felt really special. Um, just such a, such a generous thing she does for the community and making yeah. You know, she's so amazing at that. And it just, it was just fun to sort of hang around her and see all the people that she was videotaping. And that's where we ran into um, Cozy Made Things and her husband, Dean, mm -hmm. um, Kristen, and, and saw him in his. Mm -hmm. his and kettle. I don't know, I, you know, and I got my pants styled so that I looked, so I could have them cuffed appropriately. So thank you for that. Who did that? Uh, uh, was it Erica or Jess? I can't remember oh. which one did it, but one of them helped me with my pants. Oh, so sorry. I was lamenting that they were too long and she was just like, cuff them. Cuff them. Yeah. yeah, that was that was a fun little, we didn't have enough time at Rhinebeck, that's for sure. Cause I think partially the meetup and- And we um, didn't even eat. Like no, we, we went to go get me a Diet Coke and they we stood in line and line and line and they ran out and then they ran out of cups and then I had a temper tantrum. <laughs> definitely had a temper tantrum <laughs> not at anyone only kate oh really I, I, yeah. no, all i said was i don't even want it like to that no, that is not how you said it but okay i thought it was i thought i represented it very bitchily like just now i don't even want it yeah all right she was like just imagine that even more exhausted and crabby yeah, that was nice. That's but good. that's called, um, that's called low blood sugar, you know, kind of, it wasn't like I was in, you know, whatever. Okay, moving on. It never rained. We were- It did not rain. Well, it didn't rain during Rhinebeck. While right. We were there. It didn't yeah. rain. We were able to see some people, but never enough people, yeah. never long enough with anybody, but that's um, the way it goes. That's, yeah. the, that's why each time you like are with somebody, you just have to Mm, be with yeah, them. totally. So, no, so yeah, but our meetup was wonderful. I mean, I would say there were probably about 50 people there. 
Um, and it was just so one. I think we, I do feel like we did some photos afterwards with people. And I, I, I love that part because we got to extend sort of the opportunity to meet people and chat with them. And yeah. So that, and the, you know, big thank you to Fangirl Fibers because she like uh, sat around and took all these candids. Yes. There. She gifted us some yarn, which I didn't show did. you. Yeah, I know. I, oh. She has some, um, Surrey alpaca. Yeah. This is DK weight though. So I know. And I, this is again one of these things. I have no idea what this does. I oh. you know, I think so. See how it just Yeah, I mean that kind of seems like um that's amazing. Look at the colors in that. Yeah. I mean, you don't even yeah. need to knit it. You can just I know <laughs> there you go. That's good. For today. Love it. Um, with my, um, that's, that's what we'll do. That's our, yeah. But she yeah, took so many it. photos and candids. Oh, <laughs> oh, Emily. oh, and Gina from Skein Cocaine. We got to meet her. Yes, and, Gina, we love you. Mm -hmm. You are Shout one of those. Shout out to you, Gina. Yep. Um, yeah, no. And another and, one of those like fabulous women that we've looked up to. And then we meet her and she's like, I like you too, which is, which it's is really so like juvenile, her. but it's what? like, you like, you know, it's ridiculous. Well, and she was all shy. I'm like, what, what? Get over here. Um, yeah, no, there were just so many wonderful encounters. Um, just, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I'm. Not yeah. You, you wrote some things down. Yeah, you. I did, but I, I feel like that was, um, that was sort of, oh my gosh. You're just talking, right? No, I'm actually podcasting. Oh, <laughs> Hi, James. Wait, he just walked in with a huge saw. Right. It's <laughs> like he has to have like man stuff. Like I remember one where he comes in with a skull. Now he's yeah. coming in with a saw. You know. I think he was like, you're still podcasting like two hours oh, late. That's what it was. Your southern husband with his yeah. man stuff. He's got his, what is that saw you have? Oh, the saws all that I gave him for Christmas is what. Oh, I was there for that moment. Yeah, you were. That's yeah. exciting stuff. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I feel like I also, yeah. Well, I also have another weekend to chat about that you weren't a part of, but we're not done yet, so. No, well, that was, I mean, that was Ryan, that was a lot of Ryan Beck. Like, the funny thing was, we had our shawl swap so we can insert a video of the shawls yeah. we made. So that'll yeah. go in here. Yes. That was so much fun. Yeah. And right. And then I don't even remember after the shawl swap what there was, but we had to, we got back. Yes. And it's all like planes, trains, and automobiles traveling. But do you want to share your shawl? I do. I do want to show my shawl. I'm just trying to find what I just did with the pattern for it. Um, I was gifted the most beautiful shawl that I feel like was so, so me um, by um, our friend Melissa, who is well knit. And I'm just, it's not going to go well with this green, but um, I do want to show it because I think it's a I think beautiful. green on green is good. You can always. So this is a Melanie Berg pattern. I'm sure it's on the floor somewhere here. Um, and it has, it's all in garter and then it just has this beautiful lace work. Um, and it happens to be my favorite shawl shape, which is just the elongated crescent. And um, Melissa, the, the lovely connection about this is the first time I encountered Melissa was on one of Christie's videos um, when she was traveling to the Pacific Northwest and she took Melissa with her and they went hiking and I thought Melissa was so cool and she hiked and she knit and she actually purchased this yarn while she was on that trip. I feel like it's Swan Island is the, is the type of yarn brand. Um, and it's just this beautiful, like for like just deep green mm -hmm. anyway. So it was just, she did such a beautiful job. She totally nailed it. Um, and for me, it's like the most wearable um, shawl. So uh, let me just see if I have, the, I thought I had it down here. Hold on one second. 
anyway, it's a Melanie Burr, something your soul. I'll have to post it. Um, but anyway, that I was just super happy with that. So yeah, so we did exchange names and we've been, you know, technically knitting all year to do our shawl swap. And there have definitely been some ups and downs <laughs> for many of us. That was fun. Hmm. I mean, we got through a big chunk without losing. I think you were just about to talk about Black Mountain. I was. So I um, had the luxury of going to another Fiverr Festival the week after I got back from Rhinebeck. So of course I was sad that you would not, you weren't able to join me because you were back at work and, you know, but um, I- Doing parent-teacher conferences. Was it that weekend? Maybe. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. But you get, you get, you get our full sympathy because you had to go back. Um, but anyway, um, Black Mountain Yarn hosted um, an amazing event called Indie, Indie, Instra Indie Extravaganza. Can you hear me? We can hear you. You're frozen. Anyway. Um, so the they version. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So anyway, they uh, Donna from Black Mountain Yarn hosted um, an event called Indian Extravaganza, which um, was a Friday and Saturday event. It's also um, ran along the same time as um, SAF, which is Southeastern Fiber Festival weekend. Um, and it was just such a fabulous event. Uh, Donna had, I don't know, I want to say maybe 10 or 12 vendors um, and some of our fan favorites like um, Renee from um, who, who's one of our favorite, favorite people. Um, did you know she changed her Instagram name and her business name? No. Yeah, so she used to be Chop Shop Bitch yeah. and now she's Chop Shop Stitch. Oh. Um, so anyway, I just want to make sure I said that right. But anyway, she was there, um, Christina and um, from Chelsea Yarns and Denise from Fig and Posey and Moon Drake Yarn and um, Julie from Barton Jar Studios and on and on and on. It was just a really amazing event. And I get to I got to um, carpool down with my new knitting friend, Jen, who lives in Knoxville. So we were able to um, drive together um, and we stayed um, with Robin from Yarnbirds and Denise from Fig and Posey in an adorable little cabin. Um, but it was just a really great event. I have to say one of the things that was really great is that like we had no specific things we had to do. Like there was, you know, there was no Caddy Jack sponsored event. Um, so, um, but Relaxing it was just when I'm not around. Exactly. I mean, it's like, oh, good. There's nobody here to take, let me photograph you doing this and this and this and pose and do this and look at you, Caitlin. Yeah, whatever. Anyway. Um, but it was just a really great event. Uh, Donna always curates the most fabulous vendors. And, um, it, and we got to Karen, our friend Karen, who we um, who we had on the podcast um, uh, somewhat recently with Donna was also there. So it was just a really, again, just another meet and greet and hang out and have some, some like really nice connections with people. So oh, good. Got, there were a couple of people that came that had their half wraps, so I was able to give them their little stitch marker, and I was wearing my letho, and there was another um, uh, woman there who also had her letho on, so it was just fun to just sort of hang out, um, and I'm trying to think of some of the, I did have a list of what I was going to talk about from that, but of course, I've totally gone off track, but I will say that... Um, uh, we did go to the SAF Fiber Festival on Sunday, which was really fun because then Donna and her whole crew could be there and just enjoy Fiber Festival that they didn't have to plan and you know, be a part of. So that was super fun. And it reminded me of sort of the like, um, Wisconsin sheep and wool. So it was in, you know, an area with a bunch of barns and all of that. And I would say the highlight for me, because I was so like, I don't need to look at any more yarn or, you know, I just <laughs> didn't need to be thinking about any more yarn but so I definitely walked through quickly just to see like if there was anything that was really like grabbed me and I have to say there um, were a couple booths and one of them is um, Ninja Chickens who I had sort of an awareness of her before but um, her name's Maria and she does she's actually um, local to I think near Asheville area and um, she does all um, uh, 
like natural dyeing of her fibers. And uh, she just had such a beautiful booth. Cause I think for me now that I'm sort of working around flowers, like that next step mm -hmm. would be like, how do you work those into your fiber? Sure. And she just does beautiful yarn dyeing. And she had all these incredible sock blanks and, um, and I'm wearing one of the things that I got from her because I was like, okay, I don't, I don't need any yarn. I don't, you know, I just want to walk I away. I noticed that before. I was going to ask about it. Yeah. So she hand spun. This is her hand spun, and she put it on wire. So just mm -hmm. turned it into a bracelet, and it was super fun because um, you can adjust the size. She's like, I only just wrap it around a, a mason jar to get the width, so you can adjust it. But it just had all these incredible yeah. colors. Um, Anyway, so Ninja Chicken, she's, I would just say definitely check her out. She has just, her palette, you would have flipped Jackie. I mean, her, just such muted, beautiful colorways. Um, and the other thing she started doing too is solar dyeing, which is new to me, where you could sort of just take any sort of blank canvas of, you know, linen or cotton, and you put the whole flower, certain flowers on it. And, you know, the solar dyeing, it's just so beautiful. So I'm excited that Flourish Flower Truck, where I work, there are some people there who are really interested in it and, and also has sort of fiber background. So I think at some point we might be doing some workshops and things like that. So she was super inspiring. Fun. And then the other thing um, that I came across was um, this company called Felted Sky. And uh, they had such a beautiful booth and everything in there was about needle felting, which is something I've wanted to try for a long time. You have a needle felting? I was using mine last night on oh, my well, you, collage. I don't, all I, I mean, I did buy, so they, I did get like a little block, felted wool block, but otherwise I bought this kit that is, um, I don't know if you can see it, they're little hearts, it's a garland. And what I thought I'd do is, instead of doing a garland, I might try to do these as individual ornaments and then sure. give people, but anyway, their palette was beautiful. And then they had these incredible, like, look at this kit. I mean, look at the fun colors and how it's packaged. And it basically has everything you need, like the needle. I think you have a more, I think you have one that's a little bit more hefty than this, but yeah. um, it basically had all the things, but they had beautiful, kits like some of them were on um um quilting what do you call the quilting ring like the, the stretcher you know the the double what your mom uses like you know it, they're round and there's two pieces embroidery of wood and, hoops. what yeah so embroidery hoops so sh they had a number of things like that where they could you could felt the wool on top of that their their kits were beautiful i'll link it below but there was this adorable couple i think they're from minnesota it's, anyway, it's called Felted Sky. So I'm super excited about trying that. I mean, have you ever done anything like ornament wise or? Yeah. No, so um, my friend Heather at work, she just gave me this little felted ring. Oh. And, oh. and she said you can put essential oils on it and then you oh. wear it like. Yeah. Healthy, like. Oh, that's nice. And then, Calm yourself down. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. So he got it at a craft fair. Well, that's so cool. Yeah. I don't know. I was just one of those things that I was like, their kits were really like affordable and they were so adorable. And I just, anyway, so that was, that was really the only kind of two things that um, I felt drawn to add to Good. my haul. Well, Kaylin, um, let's talk about Nick Collage before we go, because yes. it is, um, let me just tell you, oh, that's reassuring. It's only noon. I thought for some odd reason it was one. I'm because of the time, time change. I got my, did I say I got my COVID shots on Friday? My third. So I'm all turned around because I was so exhausted. I took a shower and I wanted to lay down. You know, when you're like that and you want to, yeah. taking the shower wears you out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure your body is fighting it. That's probably why you didn't sleep either. Yeah, and I got the flu shot and- Oh, and I did that. Oh, you did the same, both of them at the same time? Yeah. Well, then I could just keep my arms moving and all of that. No, oh. I don't think I would have done that. Well, who has time to go to Walgreens? I know, I know, I know. Like, it's just like, get it over with. Yeah, yeah, but that's probably why you're like so yeah. 
out of sorts. I just have, I just wanted to quick share like a Eureka tip I had about the fall knit along that yeah. while I was making it. Thank you to everyone who got, who used our affiliate link. Yes. I really appreciate that. I went to the, the Zoom call this week for the kickoff and it was so fun to see familiar people, to see new people to, you know, I mean, there was a absolute beginner knitter in there and she was having that experience of, I don't know if I can actually do this. And everybody in our little Zoom group was so reassuring. It was, and she, I feel like it was her like initiation into what knitters are like and can yeah. be like. So it was oh, really sweet. That's sweet. Yeah. It reminded me, I, Lily and Sally and I will podcast later. Lily and I we're talking and we were looking at all of her shawls and just looking at her knits and which ones she wears and which ones she doesn't. And her wall of shawls, I, I think it's such an act of self-creation. Not only are you creating garments, but, and this is what Amy and Nicolaj talks about, you're creating this identity and you're expanding your sense of self. I made that, I chose that, I put yeah. this in the world, this will actually, you know, from the tatter blue library, this will actually outlive me or outlast me some of these yeah. pieces. And so it's pretty amazing. So Nicolaj is so fun. And um, I'm starting off with the mountain cardi and it's a, meant to be a steaked cardigan, but I didn't feel like doing a steak in, and that's fine. And it's made, I mean, I, I don't prefer, of course, purling, but I just didn't want the bulky steak. And it doesn't matter. But here's my epiphany, Caitlin. Okay. Okay, so here it is so far. Wow. So okay. beautiful. Yeah, I I think, oh, I wrote on, I put it on our stories this morning, the name of this color, but I can't remember right now. But these are a lot of new colors. Yeah, um, right. Blush and this green is new, this neon's new. Yeah. So do you see this little section, Caitlin, right here yeah. where you have this pop? Yeah. Have you ever done something with knit collage and you, and you were working with like the daisy chain or the dreamland and you were bummed because what you wanted was a yeah. little further down? Yeah. And you wanted it to be, or it would go thin and you wanted it to stand out there. Sure. So I don't know. So I wanted my things to pop. Like this is now wrapped around me. So just a second. <clears throat> so I wanted them to really stick out. So what I did is when I got there, I just knit yarn over knit, you know, or, and made three stitches in one so that it would be really bulky. And I was thinking I could do that when I get to the wildflower yarn too, is just do three stitches instead of one and, or, and then even if I'm going to show you, I'll show you a close up of like where it was really thin. frosty green, I think is the color you were talking about. Yeah. Okay, like here's a place, and this is what it ends up looking like. It's just this giant chunk of knitting, but it really yeah. stands out. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want to make baubles, but I had to rip this out. And um, the first time I did it, they didn't show up very much, just single. Sometimes it was so skinny in there. So I'm very yeah. happy with that. And I so it's meant to be a bobble? It's no, it's just meant to be a knit stitch with a purl stitch. And that's supposed to give it some like texture. Yeah. And, I, and mine just wasn't standing out enough. Oh, yeah. So cool. I did that and I feel very happy about it. Yeah. Um, did you try on that sample at Amy's booth? I didn't because it was on a it was on a mannequin. I ordered, I just went ahead and ordered this morning 60 inch size 17 needles because the trouble with color work, I think, on small needles is you will inevitably, you will, especially if you're doing it in a round, it's going to be really hard not to have your stuff be too tight because yeah. you don't have as much space even to spread them out. Yeah. So I knit it like with two needles and I just, you know, what, how that looks in practice is I oh. use, I knit with these two. Then when I'm done with that, I pick up here and I knit with these two because I want to have enough space to spread out my knitting so it doesn't yeah. get tight in my color work. 
So were you able to, were you, did you order wooden needles or metal? They're, you know what? I don't even know. I just ordered them like a Chiago 60 inch size 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were 20 bucks. That's not bad. But I do I mean, knit collage every year. So I, I know I do feel like, um, I, a lot of times I'm able to knit with my metal Chiago for some of the knit collage, but I prefer metal than to the wooden needles. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, well, yeah, I, that was I, what I wanted to say. I was so happy with that discovery. Yeah, no, that's, I love that, you know, that's what's just the nature of her yarn and her patterns is just to sort of get a level of confidence to just play. You know? And you can rip out, like I had yeah. to rip that out three times. Yeah. Right. I, kept, I messed up something. I don't know yeah. why. I think you were talking about it briefly when maybe when I stepped out to grab something. Um, but I absolutely was in love with the samples that Amy had at her knit collage booth mm. at Cake Rosa. And forgive me if I'm repeating what you already said, but I, I feel like. Oh, shoot. All right. Hold on, because we can't hear you right now. This is why we try to zoom. We try to do this in person. Okay, keep talking and let's, okay. There's I'm much be I'm much better at seeing things in person. I need I, like I have a harder time visualizing things. So those samples for me were like, oh my gosh, it made me want to knit every single thing she had. It was yeah. so beautiful. So it made me even. I was already excited about the loop it up cardigan, but I'm already even more. I feel like it has that Chanel jacket quality to it anyway and i know i showed it before but i did wind it up that's so beautiful up, um the honeysuckle and and the the petal um so my plan is to see how it looks with the with the um the tape yarn as the loop it up the, the loop so we'll see um but i'm really excited i i feel like i've been wanting to have this color in my wardrobe for a really long time so yeah. i'm excited about awesome. that um, so hopefully next time I'll have some progress, maybe an FO. We'll see. Great. Great. Um, yeah. All right. Well, that about sums it up. Yeah. Well, I think we'll go before we lose you again. That sounds like a really good idea. So just so much gratitude for sending us to Rhinebeck from our patrons. So, so mm -hmm. much. Um, and we, we are so lucky and um, we we never want to take that for granted. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and we appreciate the new patrons that have come along too. And um, and we just hope that we're we're giving you some joy and sharing it with you and that you feel a part of it because that's really our goal. So mm -hmm. uh, so be sure to comment below if you yes. want to knit one of these, which color. Yep. And then look on Instagram in the next 24 hours for a giveaway to celebrate the 9,000 um, for the big so fluff. There. This the could be good. Fluff. And I would like it without the snow background, but um, hold on. Yeah. Here it comes. Here it comes. Fluff is coming. Oh, so good. Here, I'll do mine. So good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my it, God, it. this is so good. And we can't wait. I, I definitely, you know how happiness is anticipating things? Mm -hmm. um i really want to go with you to bainbridge island and visit and oh my gosh yes. well, yeah well i'm not going without you yeah <laughs> okay all right we love you we'll yeah see you soon okay bye, -bye. bye. boom